For today's video, I'm going to be doing a walkthrough on how to farm legendaries after patch 3.4. And then towards the end of the video, I'm going to show you what I got after I transformed 5 legendary schematics that I got using the method I'm about to show you. Now in order to farm legendary transforms, we're going to be using the same method we use to farm missions that give V-Bucks, which is to go to Storm Shield 1, and I'll leave a link to it in the description. And once you click on that link, you can see all of the rewards that the current alert missions are offering. They've added a new feature on Storm Shield 1 that makes it easier to spot the rarity of the different rewards. So V-Bucks and legendary items are going to be highlighted in orange. Epic items are going to be highlighted in purple and rare items are going to be highlighted in blue. And I believe they just added this new feature and that makes it a lot easier to tell if there's any legendaries that are currently available. And another thing I wanted to point out is that since patch 3.4, I've seen legendary schematics and transforms in both Candy Valley and Twine Peaks. The only legendary item that I've seen in Stonewood and Plankerton are V-Bucks. But I have seen epic items in both Stonewood and Plankerton. So as of right now, I'm not really sure if you can get legendary items other than V-Bucks as rewards in Stonewood and Plankerton. But you can definitely get them in Candy Valley and Twine Peaks. I believe the patch was like four or five days ago. And every day since that patch, I've seen legendary items available as rewards from alert missions. And some days I'll even see like two or three legendaries. All right, so another thing I want to point out is that you can tell when these missions are going to expire by looking at the top. As you can see in this example, all of the alert missions in Stonewood, Candy Valley, and Twine Peaks are going to expire in two hours and 35 minutes. And the alert missions in Plankerton are going to expire in four hours and 27 minutes. So that'll tell you how much time you have in order to get these rewards. And it's also going to let you know when new rewards are going to be added in case they're not currently given any rewards that you want. Directly to the left of the reward, you can see the power level of the mission that you have to complete. And that's going to make it easier to find the mission. Instead of searching throughout the entire zone, you only need to search through the missions that have that same power level. And like I said, these missions that you see at the top of this page are alert missions. And you can do as many alert missions as you want, but you can only get these rewards from the alert missions three times every day. So if you completed three of these missions already today, you're not going to get any of these rewards that you see on the screen until 24 hours have passed. And you can tell how many alert missions you currently have available and how much time you have until you can get rewards from another alert mission by searching your name under player lookup. So we're going to go ahead and search my name real quick. Now once you search your name, you're going to see a screen like this, and it's going to have all of your stats as well as your current loadout and your squads. But the thing you're going to want to look for are the alert cooldowns right here. So as you can see, there's a one above the alert cooldowns, and that means I can do one of the alert missions and get the alert rewards. And it also shows you how much time you have to wait until you get your next alert cooldown. And again, I believe the cap is three every 24 hours. So that's another thing you want to look out for. If for any reason you don't see the legendary schematic or transform in the game, that might mean that you've already done your three alert missions for the day. So what I would recommend doing is to avoid alert cooldown missions until you see one that gives you a reward that you want, whether it's epic, legendary, or V-Bucks. And you can tell which ones are the alert missions because they have a little clock symbol next to it. Also, when it comes to storm cooldowns, I believe the cap is three. And when it comes to group mission cooldowns, I believe the cap is 10. And the last thing I want to point out when it comes to farming legendaries is that if you get one that's a transform schematic, you're going to have to transform it. And for weapon transforms, you're going to have to get a total of 500 points as well as have some research points in order to transform it. And I know some people are wondering how can you get enough points to make the transform. And what I would recommend doing is farming event tickets and opening event llamas because you're guaranteed to get at least one epic or legendary item from every event llama. So if you're struggling to transform your legendary schematics, try farming event tickets. And the best way to farm event tickets right now is to do those group missions. Uh, if you're struggling with the group missions, then just go to a lower level mission and try that out. And like I said earlier, you can do a total of 10 group missions every 24 hours. So you can earn up to like 2,000 tickets every day, depending on which missions you do. And that pretty much sums up how I've been farming legendary since patch 3.4. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you what I got after my first five legendary transformations since that patch. In this first one, we were able to get a Hunter Killer Assault Weapon. And the perks that came with it were an increase in headshot damage, crit damage, headshot damage, headshot damage, and more damage. Let me know what y'all think about this Hunter Killer. 
Now the next legendary transform was a spear, and when I transformed it, I got a farmer's glory. And the perks that came with it were damage to afflicted, damage, damage, longer durability, and it also increases the weapon damage and changes it to water and causes affliction. And we got four good perks out of five, so that's not too bad. Anyways, in the next legendary transform, we got a death stalker assault weapon. And the perks that came with this were crit damage, damage, crit chance, reload speed, and fire rate. In my fourth transformation, I got a master's driver club. And the perks that came with it were heavy attack efficiency, crit damage, damage to slow, damage, and longer durability. And I do already have a master's driver with better perks, so I'll probably end up using this one for another transformation. And as for the last transformation, we got a Viper Pistol, and the perks that came with it were damage, magazine size, reload speed times 2, and it also had its damage type changed to water, and it causes affliction damage for 6 seconds. So yeah, we didn't really get lucky when it comes to perks, but as you can tell, we're getting a lot of chances to get a weapon that has good perks by using the method we went over earlier. Let me know what you think about these new weapons that we got. Also, let me know what you think about the increased legendary schematic rewards in Candy Valley and Twine Peaks. Anyways, that'll do it for this one. I hope y'all found the video useful, and thanks for watching.